welcome to our online worship for the Feast of Epiphany. My name is Joe White. Epiphany marks the arrival of the wise men to the home of Mary and Joseph to worship the young Jesus. Epiphany also ends the 12 days of Christmas. And so now we take this opportunity to acknowledge that we gather on the lands of the Bunurong people and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Collect for the Feast of Epiphany. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led Magi to the worship of your Son, Guide the nations of the earth by your light, that the whole world may see your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 72. Give the king your judgment, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king, that he may judge your people rightly and the poor of the land with equity. Let the mountains be laden with peace because of his righteousness and the hills also with prosperity for his people. May he give justice to the poor among the people and rescue the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and while the moon gives light throughout all generations. May he come down like rain upon the new mown fields and as showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall bring tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. All kings shall fall down before him, and all nations do him service. He will deliver the needy when they cry, and the poor that have no helper. He will pity the helpless and the needy, and save the lives of the poor. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, and their blood shall be precious in his sight. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forevermore. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, beginning at, chapter, at verse 1 of chapter 3. This is the reason that I, Paul, I am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, 
members of the same body and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search di diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The 12 days of Christmas are drawing to their close. And perhaps like me, you're relieved to see the busyness subside a little as we relax into the new year. Even so, we are still in the season of Christmas as we celebrate the birth of Christ and the feast of Christmas until Epiphany on January the 6th. Epiphany is the celebration of the manifestation of the light of the world in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, the wise men of our nativity set have traveled from the porch in the church to join the Holy Family at our crib. Let me share with you a little story about a church crib. Once the people of a poor parish had their hearts set on acquiring a rather special and expensive set of figures for their Christmas crib. They spent two whole years fundraising until finally they had enough to buy the figures which were made in Italy and had been painted by Franciscan monks from Assisi. Very special they were. Mary alone, the figure of Mary, cost in excess of 400 pounds, but they were just determined to have the very best for their little church. Eventually, they took delivery of this huge consignment. As they unwrapped each figure and arranged them in the sanctuary, they were filled with pride. 
The church was left open all day on Christmas Day so that people could come in and pray and also they, so they could admire the new crib. Of course, this was pre-COVID times. That afternoon, as usual, about half past five, the priest came to close up the church. And once he checked on everything, he bowed at the altar, as was his habit, to notice that baby Jesus was not in his crib. Someone had, had stolen baby Jesus. How could anybody be so cruel as to do such a thing? As he was leaving, the priest noticed a little girl with a small pram entering the church and she made straight for the crib. Then she carefully took baby Jesus from her pram and lovingly placed him back where he belonged with Mary and Joseph and the animals. Before she left, this little girl knelt down and was observed by the priest to offer a prayer in front of the crib. As she was leaving, the priest stopped her to ask why she had taken the baby Jesus. Oh, I didn't steal him, she said. You see, I got this pram for Christmas and I wanted to take baby Jesus for a walk in it so that he could see all the people of our neighborhood and they could see him. Well, Jesus had been taken beyond the quaintness of that precious nativity scene to what is probably his rightful place. Jesus might start his journey in our churches, but he must be taken out among the people of our neighborhood if he is truly to be the light of the world. The story of the Magi is a beautiful and terrible one. Somewhere just below the surface of this, the adventurous and inspired journey of the Magi, there is the dark figure of Herod planning and plotting Jesus' death. The story tells how, guided by the light of a star, some wise men come to Jerusalem from the east. They are looking for the infant king of the Jews. After making inquiries in Jerusalem, they eventually find the child in Bethlehem, the famous birthplace of King David. These men have been on a long journey across many miles. Their purpose was to pay homage to the infant king. They knew Jesus to be that king for many reasons, including the presence of the star, the auspicious place of his birth, and the prophecies which they had read about in the scriptures. Upon finding the spot, they were overwhelmed with joy and on entering the house, they opened their treasure chests, offering him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Christian tradition has developed this story further. Matthew calls the wise men magi. The term was used in ancient Persia to describe learned philosophers and astronomers. Tradition soon upgraded them and they became oriental kings. After all, kings would go to visit a new king and who other than kings would bring such lavish gifts and have the wealth to travel such a great distance. Since the wise men brought three gifts, it's often assumed that there were just three men who visited Jesus and these three wise men were then given names, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. They are understood to represent the three known continents, Asia, Europe, and Africa. To people of those times, that was the whole world. This tradition has come to symbolize the important message of Matthew's gospel and of the ministry of St. Paul summarized in his letter to the Ephesians chapter three the important me message that Jesus comes not to save the people of Israel alone, but to save the people of the whole world. From early times, Christians have found particular significance in each of the gifts offered to Jesus. The gold was believed to symbolize the royal kingship of Christ. 
And we would recognise Jesus, not as a political king, but as the king who reigns in our hearts, our Lord and our saviour. The frankincense, an aromatic substance, indicated his divinity. Incense, in, the case, in this case, frank incense, is often used to express the fragrance of our prayers, rising to heaven as with the smoke. And Jesus, as our great high priest, who is constantly at prayer for us. Then the myrrh used to anoint, to embalm corpses. This was a pointer to Jesus' death and burial. In these ways, Christian tradition has embroidered the story of the Magi. But while this overlay might be interesting, it could distract us from Matthew's central message, namely that Christ is the saviour not just of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. There is a great paradox at the heart of this story. The Jews who possess the scriptures and live so close to the birthplace of Christ fail to recognise him. While the Gentiles, the Magi, come from far away and with the help of the scriptures and the study of the stars, find Jesus and adore him. Inside the story is the anticipation of salvation. And the means of that salvation is the death and resurrection of Christ. Having worshipped Christ, we are told that the Magi return to their own country by another route. This was not just a change of itinerary. There is a deep, deeper reason for which we are witnesses. Like us, having met Jesus on the road of life, their path and ours is forever changed. Because we have known and continue to know and love Christ, our lives, life's journey takes a different course, a new path. We travel by a different route. We have different attitudes, different values and different goals because of Jesus, because of God's love made known to us in the birth of our Saviour. Jesus, born into a lowly stable, to a simple family, and in what could be called poor circumstances, is visited and honoured by the wealthy Magi. And that's not how it usually works. Usually the rich in society only entertain and honour other rich people, other A-listers. When we observe the rich wise men kneel down before a lowly manger bed to honour Jesus, we are witnessing the first of many radical changes that Christ will bring about in our world. Our role in all of this is to embrace Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and like that little girl in our story today with her pram, we are to take Jesus and his radical message of hope, love and justice we are to take that message on a walk around our neighbourhood. Well, let us pray for the world and for the church. Lord of all nations, your prophet Jeremiah wrote about the coming of believers from the farthest parts of the earth and from every nation. We pray for today for Christians throughout the world to stand up and be counted for their faith with courage and commitment. We pray for church leaders and helpers that they will be faithful in the face of persecution and danger. We pray especially for the leaders of nations that they will seek peace and not war. Especially we pray for the relationship between Australia and China, 
that they might find common ground. We pray also that we will be an outward looking church as we seek to engage with our world in this part Bass Phillip Island area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, gracious and all-powerful God. With the psalmist, we praise you today for your blessing, your command over the whole earth, your swift and faithful word, and your providential care of our lives and our future. We pray for the courage to be faithful and alive in our worship, and we give thanks that we're able to worship together again in number. We pray for each of our three centres, St. Philip's, St. Paul's and St. Augustine's, that they may continue to be places of lively worship and outreach. We give thanks for new parish members and we pray for this new year which is commencing that we, it will be a time of deepening spirituality in the lives of every parish member. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our community. Lord God, creator of all life and community, we give you thanks for your word in Ephesians, that you have a plan to unite all things together in you, things in heaven and on earth. So we pray that the community of Bass Phillip Island will be a community that reaches out to the poor, the troubled, the lonely, and those in particular need. May we be a community of love and giving, not greed and taking. May we be a community that is safe and caring. And so we pray for our local police force, for the fire brigade members, for SES volunteers, for council officers, for doctors, nurses and pharmacists, and for all our places of elderly care. May we too be tolerant of and caring toward our many visitors and holiday makers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are in particular need. Lord of our beginning and our end, you became flesh and dwelt among us and gave us power to become your children. In your love and mercy to us, help us to have the energy and the love to reach out to those in particular need. We pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones, especially those who have passed away recently, that they will find peace in their lives and with their memories. We pray for those who are depressed or have ongoing illnesses or find the daily grind of life difficult. We pray that they will receive help and blessing in their particular need. We pray for those carrying burdens of any sort, that they may find their rest in you and will find strength to carry on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A little prayer from St. Augustine. O Lord, the house of my soul is narrow, enlarge it, that you may enter in. It is ruinous. O repair it. It displeases your sight, I confess it, I know. But who shall cleanse it? To whom shall I cry but you? Cleanse me from my secret faults, O Lord, and spare your servant from strange sins. Amen. Lord God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Blessing 
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest to you, that your lives may be a light to the world. Notices for this week. We are seeking helpers for our school holiday book sales to be held in the parish hall from Thursday the 21st of January to Tuesday the 26th of January. If you are able to help, please get in touch with me and I'll pass your interest on to our coordinator. The book sale is also a great place to purchase some holiday reading, so we hope you will visit and find a bargain in our parish hall. The monthly market at St Philip's Cows is coming around again too, and we are seeking volunteers to help with the Devonshire tea. If you can help, please get in touch with me and I'll pass your interest on to our coordinator. Church services continue in our current pattern. St Augustine's San Remo holds a Holy Communion service on Tuesdays at 11am and a family service on the first and third Sundays of each month at 10.30am. St Paul's Bass holds a Holy Communion service on Sundays at 1.30 and St Philip's Cows has Holy Communion on Sundays at 10am and Thursdays also at 10am. And you are always welcome at these services. We are currently using QR codes to sign in, or you can simply write your first name and telephone number and the, your time of arrival to register your attendance. Bookings are appreciated, so please ring to book. As this holiday season continues, may you have times of fun and adventure and times of rest and peace. And may God bless you.